At this very moment, for trillions of miles in all directions, there is nothing but the cold, barren vacuum of space, peppered with pockets of inorganic matter called planets and star systems that indiscriminately explode and smash into each other. And although it escapes most people's awareness, we down here on this rock cling to it for dear life. For most people, the concept of human extinction is an impossibility. We think that all the sorrows and struggles and challenges that were ever overcome by every human being, every act of kindness, every battle that was fought, this could never just be for nothing, we tell ourselves. How could millions of years of human evolution be in vain? We would hope that even if we were destroyed by a passing asteroid, or even by ourselves, that hopefully the relics of our fallen species would be retrieved by future intelligent species and inspire them to not make the same mistakes that we did. We hope that the totality of human existence would have had some contribution to the quest of life to expand beyond this planet's reaches. That is, after all, the whole point of life. The life force on Earth is trying to get off of Earth to go to other planets. The point isn't to stay here on this planet. The force which causes cells to multiply is that same force which compels us beyond the stars. As the saying goes, go forth and multiply. Any civilization before taking that leap to the planetary level, however, must first master its own house. Think about it, could Britain or Spain or Portugal ever have colonized the Americas if they were not unified nations themselves beforehand? Could a bunch of ragtag fiefdoms have ever coordinated themselves in such a way that would allow this imperialistic act to unfold? Of course not. The passing through every evolutionary Rubicon requires unification. In order to make the leap to a planetary species, the Earth must first come under the auspices of a single governing body, a world order. There is no concept today which is a bigger point of contention than the notion of having a world government system. The reality is staring us in the face, however, and the clock is ticking. If we do not escape this planet's clutches, like the Ouroboros or snake that consumes its own tail, we will devour ourselves through war, famine, disease, and habitat loss. The clock is ticking. Before we cross that Rubicon that makes us a planetary civilization, we are likely to destroy ourselves, if not suffer immeasurable catastrophes as a result of our mismanagement of our resources, our greed, and our myopia as nations. According to the Kardashev scale, there are three types of civilizations. We are not even on this scale yet. We are still down here, battling it out for likes and AdSense revenue. We are a Type 0 civilization. A Type 1 civilization is defined as one which can harness the entire energy that is contained within its planet, harvesting all of the sunlight that comes to Earth and transforming that into usable energy. A Type 2 civilization is able to harness all of the energy of its star system. And a Type 3 civilization is one who's able to harness the energy of multiple star systems, an interstellar civilization. Again, we're still down here trying to get likes and AdSense revenue. We are trying to become a Type 1 species. The reality is there are so many hurdles to overcome before we get there. Nobody wants to concede all of their individual rights and freedoms to a greater governing body for obvious reasons. And this may be why technology may have to come in and make those decisions for us. As Elon Musk is quoted as saying, either we create artificial intelligence or civilization will end. Paradoxically, he also thinks civilization will end if we do invent artificial intelligence prematurely. That is, if it's birthed out of the haste of an arms race, we may create something which is out of our control. We've got ourselves into so many binds right now that the only algorithmic process which can correct these problems is one born from a synthesized consciousness, that is, an intelligent computer. I did a recent poll on the channel where I asked people if they felt that the human race would go extinct. You can see that post here. 
The majority of people don't believe that the human race will go extinct, but that we will be faced with major tribulations and disasters. 5% believe that we will not have any major disasters and that the worst of our woes as a species are behind us. But a combined total of 42% of people believe that we're either going to go extinct or that the clock is going to go back several hundred years. This is not to say that polling makes it so or that these numbers carry any real predictive power whatsoever, other than an estimation of people's anxiety about the future. But almost everyone agrees, with the exception of 5% of people, that before we sort these problems out that we face on this planet, there will be many more disasters and catastrophes that we will have to weather. Let me know what your thoughts are on the fate of our human species in the comments section below. I also want to talk about the arrogant idea that we are evolved. Most people don't realize this, especially the youth when looking back at photos, black and white photos in particular of the pre-World War II era, that we're not nearly as evolved as we think. See, we hold up our smartphones as evidence of how transcendent our technology is over the forests from which we emerged. The reality is, if we don't destroy ourselves in the next hundred years, we will look just like those people in the black and white photographs to people in the year 2120. Our smartphones are going to seem as silly and futile as telegraphs seem to us now. Future generations are going to wonder how we ever even managed to survive. Life must have been so hard for us, they'll say. We're going to look incredibly primitive, ignorant, and all of the technology we hold in such high esteem right now will likely be totally obsolete. This is going to happen in 30 years, never mind 100 years. This inevitable transformation doesn't stop people from deluding themselves into thinking that they are superhuman compared to previous generations, that we are somehow different and even ethically more evolved. When the reality is we are essentially the same as we've always been, we just have different technology. The teenagers of today, for instance, are no different than those 100 years ago. Energetic, defiant, clumsy, struggling with the same social problems as they always have. The only difference today is that there is an exaggerated hubris through which we distinguish ourselves from previous generations. This unwarranted attitude that we are now somehow different and more ethically involved just because we made it through a couple world wars in the 1960s, or just because we're better groomed and have more elaborate costumes to mask our true primal nature is unjustified. We've barely gotten off the rock. We've put a few hunks of metal into orbit and haven't even metastasized to another planet yet. If we are to be successful and become an interstellar species, this will be looked at as the embryonic phase of our evolution. Yet many of us walk around as if we are in its pinnacle. The last couple generations have had this arrogance that we are somehow exponentially evolved over previous ones. And this is true to an extent, because the internet of course is exponentially better than the telephone, and the telephone is exponentially better than the telegraph. But something will emerge that's exponentially better than the internet. And people will look back at Google and wonder how we ever found what we were looking for. The reason why I bring this up is because it's this same arrogant mentality that we are somehow different from civilizations of the past, which will create the conditions necessary for the destruction of the current one. Not learning from history has to be the most cardinal of sins as far as evolution is concerned. You see how I conflated science and religion there? I'm all about bringing people together. My question to you is, and where I'm stuck in terms of how to conclude a video like this, is where does prepping fit in with all of this? Where do people who are preparing for impending disaster due to the shortcomings of human beings' ability to manage these major problems that we face, where do we fit into this picture? Think about the concept of an intergalactic survivalist, because that's really what you are. You're a person who wants to survive if everybody else goes the way of the dinosaur. And as such, you're going to be marooned here by yourself on this planet with the cold deadness of space enveloping you for trillions of miles in all directions. What is the cosmic significance of preparedness? On that note, I'm going to conclude there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. 
premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.